G'day mates, welcome to The Legend of Korra, the final episode, episode 12 of season 1, I say the final episode of season 1, the season finale, um, and uh, I'm very excited because if this series is, as people said, originally uh, made to be a mini-series, I imagine we wrap up the Amon storyline in this episode. I mean, the sad thing is, I really like the Amon storyline, I'm really liking everything with the Equalists and I'm liking learning about all that stuff, but at the same time, time a, a good finale is a good finale and uh i think the fact that this storyline won't overstay its welcome is also kind of cool um so i'm i'm uh, immensely excited to watch this episode the season finale and i'm also excited for uh when we move on to the next season and uh and if you're watching this on youtube i'm already on the next season on my patreon account i actually might be quite a ways into the next season because i'm pretty far ahead on cora on my patreon account right now um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm really keen to do this. Uh, last time we learned Amon's and Tarlok's backstory, their father was, is not Capone, what is it? Uh, oh my god, I can't remember his name right now. It's like Capone, it sounds like Capone, but it, but it's not. It's, uh, no, I, I got him, Amon's name is Noah Toak. um, but... With, uh, Yakone. Yakone, that's what it is. So Yakone is the father. He basically taught them how to blood bend and tried to make them these awful benders despite being a non-bender. Um, and, well, you know, newly non-bender because of the Avatar. Um, and then basically Amon and Tarlok, uh, fucked off. Or Amon fucked off. I don't know if Tarlok fucked off. I can't remember. Um, but, uh, and then Amon basically wasn't seen again, I think, until he came back with a mask, I imagine. And he seems to be mad at Benders now. Uh, I, I assume because he sees the power of bending through blood bending and knows it's horrible. And so is trying to stop people from having that sort of power because you never know who could become the next Yakone, you know? That's how I imagine his, uh, where his allegiances lie, but... Um, we didn't, I don't think we got super specifics on it, but if they leave it open, that's fine too, because I've already got my theory on why he's like that. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, we're gonna jump into this episode right now. Um, anything else to say? Uh, go to my Patreon account if you want the full-length versions of these reactions. You have to have your own footage, but you can sync it up with mine. And, uh, there's also early access on there. There's many more episodes on there than there are, is on YouTube right now. Um, and exclusive videos as well. Um, otherwise, like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I know it's a very small thing, but it really does help me out if you can do it, and it helps other people be able to find this content, which is a big thing to help grow my channel so I can continue doing these videos and I don't have to stop and get a job on the, on the street eating garbage as a job. People pay me to eat garbage on the side of the road. They hand me a Coke can. Anyway, let's move on. Here we go, episode 12 of Legend of Korra. Let's do it. Endgame, Avengers, hell yeah. Ooh, cinematic already, I like it. Once we get down there, I need you to tear up those runways. We can't mm. let those aircraft take off. That makes sense. Right, Just start throwing rocks around. <laughs> Aww. Uh -uh. Stay. Aww. Fence posts, but no fence. Oh, there is a fence, holy shit. It's an electric fence, but there's no fence. It's just electric. This music's cool. Cora's the one with the boobs, I imagine. The guard there. Doric occasion. That's a cool little panning shot there, man. This show is so lo a nice looking. Struck down my entire family to equalize the world. That's a lie, Amon. <laughs> Yeah. I call you Noah Talk. Ooh, baby. You we know your backstory. No. Amon is a waterbender. Oh. What is this nonsense? Brother is Councilman Tarlock. What? <laughs> An amusing tale. I mean, I do we have we don't have any truth. proof. Oh. He will have a burnt face. Yeah, he's got a very burned face. Did he burn his own face? 
to show his story? Did to me. They don't believe me. It didn't work. I think he burned his own face. Reminds me of an Ace Attorney case, but I can't say which one without spoiling it. Oh no! Oh shit! Oh no 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 no! They're gonna wipe out the Airbenders. We saw them get away. Shit! Asami. Oh no! Asami, I know I have hurt you. You fuck I'm off. Sorry. I intercepted your message to Commander Bumi. I know exactly where they're hiding. Oh God! Everything's going so wrong. How are we gonna do this in one episode? That is a negative, sir. Yes, Naga. Oh my god. You're fucking strong, Naga. Who needs a metal bender? Going after those airplanes. No, 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 Naga! Ooh, she gonna use a mech suit? Okay. Just like a future industries forklift. <laughs> yeah, of course she'll know how to use it. Woo! Man, I like Iro. Oh my god! Okay, good. He has a parachute. <laughs> the avatar needs to be reminded of the power I possess. Oh my god. Oh! Okay. God. It doesn't make Korra look sympathetic to these equalists, but... Nice. Yes. Oh man, I'm scared Tenzin's gonna lose his powers in this episode. Follow me, kids. He's too cool. Oh man. It's crazy how scary this non-bender is to the Avatar. Well, he's a, he is a bender. He just hasn't used bending. He's a water bender though. And a bloodbender, so he is actually properly scary. But just without us seeing his abilities. Oh no! Alright, we're seeing him now! Holy fuck! Oh shit! I think he theoretically would have been just as good, if not better, than your cone. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Avatar State or something! Do something! You can't lose your Shit! I told you I No! Are you fucking kidding me? Did she actually lose her bending? <laughs> What's gonna happen? Man, this is cool. I'm still thinking about Korra and her bending, but this is so cool. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh shit! That's pretty sick. Break the Amon mask. Come on, break the mask. Is it gonna break the mask or is it just. I thought it'd be symbolic. Yes, it did break the mask! Hell yeah! Now he's fucking strong. <laughs> That's really funny. Insolent child. That's a good line though, that you don't feel love for your for mum anymore. Oh man. No chance to save you. Ooh. Hell yeah! Aww. <laughs> Bolin's such a good guy. I hope he finds a partner by the end of this series that makes him happy. Pull his head off. Yep, well, you designed that. Poor Asami, holy shit. She does almost nothing but good things and just gets shit on. By life, I mean. 
Oh no. Come on. Car said is true, isn't it? <laughs> I just saw you bloodbend her. Oh. Oh. I like this guy's cool. Look at his face. My life to you. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh no, Marco's gonna lose his bending now. Oh shit, Marco! Woo! I think he had to focus his blood bending on three people, which gave Marco a little bit more mobility. Marco, my bending. Everything yeah. will be alright. We just oh. need to get out of here. Shit! Oh my god! Someone so talented. Almost. Oh, Avatar State, come on! Oh! That's that's air bending! She can't bend! Impossible. Ho -ho. I can air bend? Ho -ho. I can air bend! Oh my god! Fuck yes! Now she's only air bending. Can she avatar state to break out of it like Aang? She doesn't even need to! She's just fucking strong, badass bitch! Holy shit! Oh, is he gonna have to waterbend to save himself and he'll lose all his supporters because he's a waterbender? Or is he just dead? <laughs> he might be just be dead. <laughs> no, it might be what I said. It's what I said! Okay! Uh, oh, it's paint! It's makeup! His lies have been exposed! Oh. oh my god! <laughs> wow! No attack. Oh, he came to Tarlock. I'm sorry for what I had to do to you. Leave with me now. Mm -hmm. Have a second chance. We can start over together. Please. You're all I oh. have left in the world. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Bro, not the time. <laughs> right, right. Yay, Uncle Boomy's here! Oh, Boomy! Great. Now I have to entertain my brother. <laughs> and he seems just as crazy as regular Boomy, just from that one snippet we saw. They are setting off alone. The two of us together again. Um, wait, is he gonna... Huh? It will be just like the good old days. What? Holy shit! <laughs> that's one of the fucking craziest things that's ever happened in the Avatar universe. What? <laughs> I can't believe that. Katara. It's going to be all right, Cora. No, it's not. <laughs> I was losing my mind at the thought of never seeing you again. I realized <sighs> I love of you. Of course he does. Of course he does. We need to be patient with her. It will take time for her to accept what is Yeah, happened. and you need to break up with Asami if if you're gonna be pursuing Cora. Please, Marco. Please stop two timing your girlfriend. Oh. Cora, oh, god damn it. I just wanna be left alone. Wait. But you called me. It's Aang! Holy shit! You have finally connected with your spiritual self. Oh. How? We are open to the greatest change. Oh. Ah, Kyoshi Roku. Ah, uh, I forgot the two names of the 
other ones. Is he restoring the bending, maybe? Can he? Oh my god, did he? Okay, alright, she's got the avatar state. And she's got the elements, but is that only in the avatar state? Or just in general? I imagine just in general. Ooh! This music is fucking awesome. I love you too. Okay. I don't know how to feel about that yet. I don't know how to feel. Give me a few more seasons. I'll I might warm up to it. <laughs> okay, so she has the power to restore the bending now. Okay. She can use the power of all the past avatars, I imagine, to restore their connection to the elements. <laughs> Holy shit. I gotta say, that is one of the most insane, crazy, shocking episodes of Avatar. That- that is crazy. <laughs> that was- that was an insane episode. I'm shocked they fit that into 20-something minutes. How long was that? It was, still, it was still 24 minutes. I'm shocked that they fit that into 24 minutes. That felt like an hour, that episode. But in a good way. It didn't drag. The pacing kept up the entire time. They just put so much into it that it felt like I went on a massive journey. I'm really impressed with that episode. Whoa! Wow, okay. Um... Where do I even begin? Okay. I'm just gonna- I'm just gonna begin with the most bonkers, crazy thing that this show has- and- and Avatar The Last Airbender has ever done. Did Tarlok just commit suicide, essentially, with Amon? Like, I- I- I mean, that was definitely the implication, obviously, is that he did. But, like, the question is whether that's six or not. I imagine it does, because it's a very impactful thing. That's so shocking to me, because that doesn't feel like a Legend of Korra, Avatar The Last Airbender thing. That's- he- he killed himself and his brother. That is not, like, something that I would expect from these shows. That is something I would expect from Breaking Fucking Bad, or, um, fucking Game of Thrones or some shit, you know? Like, that's- that is a massive- Thing to just throw in an episode. They very well could have gotten away with having Amon and uh, and Tarlok like ride off into the sunset like they were doing and just never mention them again. Or they could have even just had him looking at the gloves and cut there, you know, just so that some people could speculate like, I think he killed himself or whatever. But they showed it. They showed him doing it. That is insane to me. I know this show is, has been, this show and Avatar have been dark at times, um, and that they've done, like, these things that, like, you know, tow the line of being a kid's show. There was a, there's a Nickelodeon logo at the start of this show. Like, this is still a Nickelodeon show. Um, and I know, like, in, in the past we've had, like, Jet has died, died in Avatar The Last Airbender, right? But they had to imply that pretty heavily. Um, they couldn't really show it, but then they did kind of confirm it later in the series. Um, and, uh, and they had, I mean, like, they, a lot of Azula stuff was kind of messed up, but, um, and obviously bloodbending as a concept is, is quite messed up as well, but I don't think there's ever been anything this dark. So, I mean, kudos because <laughs> that's really cool i i i i think that's one of the coolest scenes that i've i've seen in this in this series um that's gonna stick with me i really liked that um so what what do i want to talk about next okay losing losing her bending so i don't they never i don't think they ever confirmed how exactly the blood bending um, was used to sever people's connections with the elements, but, um, but also, I, it doesn't really matter, I mean, I, I the sim simplest explanation probably is that there's, like, literal things in your body somewhere that if you s sever them in the right way, you literally, you lose your connection to the elements, um, and what the Avatar State 
I imagine my theory was what it could do is by doing that you're taking all of the past avatars and their experiences and their bendings and all of that and you're put you're flowing that into the person so they gain a new connection so it might not even be like this is th like the connection in their body was fixed but rather they built a new connection now using like hundreds and thousands of benders uh, from from the past. That's how I imagine this got fixed. Now the question is why did Cora's uh, airbending work um, when her other elements didn't? So so I mean they might talk about this later in the series um, so oh, but they also might not. It also might be just something that they never properly explain or just implied what the thing is. I guess my theory right now would be what Amon's thing does is he severs their connection to whatever element they're connected to, right? And Korra was never connected to airbending. That's what I think in my mind. She she just wasn't. She like as an as the avatar, you have to build a connection with the elements. And she just never built that connection because air Airbending historically has been relatively pacifist. Like not not all airbending is pacifist, but historically it has often been used in the name of pacifism, most notably with Aang. Um, and and I I think that's just not Korra's style. So I imagine she never felt a connection to airbending, so she never airbent, and therefore she never had a connection in her body with airbending, which is why she couldn't airbend. So. The other elements she had a strong connection to. Amon severs the ties of all of her bending. Bang, bang, bang. It cuts all the ties between the three elements that she has connections to, but there's still a slot that she hadn't even opened yet for her connection with airbending. She hit her lowest point. She's in desperation. She draws on the power of airbending and builds a connection for the first time, something that Amon couldn't have severed because he took her bending before she even built the connection. That's how I imagine... Um, in my mind, that works. So, I I, I have no, no nothing really to back that up other than the episode and what I saw and what I what I feel like happened. But I think it's not a bad theory, you know. Um, it's not too bad for for my dumb old brain. So uh, Amon, I mean, it was really cool having Amon like be exposed for his lies and and have the equalist turn against him and stuff because he pr he has to prove that he's an air uh, an, a waterbender and he shows his his scars coming off and all of that is really cool here's a sad thing though and i wonder if they're going to touch on this in future seasons amon's ideals ne weren't necessarily the problem the problem was the extremity of his ideals and the way he went about them um, but the, the f fact of the matter is he, his, uh, his stance was about how benders oppress non-benders and the, and like this, it was perfectly shown through the fact that Tarlok was able to rise those ranks, get to the council and then oppress non-benders. And he was basically able to do it like as much as he wanted until he kidnapped Korra like he literally had to do something like so unforgivable for people to turn on him otherwise he was he was free to do whatever the fuck he wanted um so like and as I've said many times in previous videos the council does not have a representative for a non-bender um and I mean it's it's been talked about that the council is not supposed to represent benders as much as they're supposed to represent the different nations and the different areas um however there's still something missing there you know like if you're writing a tv show when when you talk about like balancing a writer's room right in terms of experiences and tv shows a lot of people will uh, like a lot of people have differing opinions on that but the good thing about a balanced uh writer's room is you can represent a bunch of different perspectives when you're writing a tv show or something so if you're writing a tv show and you get uh, a um a writer's room full of all men right then uh it's you, like your female characters aren't aren't going to be as well represented as if you had women in your writer's room it just it it kind of just can't be because i mean you might be an amazing male writer and maybe you you can but it most likely won't be 
um, because you're not getting those experiences firsthand within the writer's room. You're not getting those perspectives when you're writing a storyline. Someone might be able to speak up and go like, hey, actually, I don't think that's the way that I feel about it. Um, and then, you know, you can get these different perspectives. Um, so obviously you can like have the writer's room be, okay, well, let's make it 50% men and 50% women. Um, right. And then you can go, okay, well, that's a balanced writer's room, but it isn't necessarily because also taking into account different races, different, um, uh, gender identities, like a d different, um, you know, a different, uh, what's the word for it? It, whether or not there are LGBT people within your writer's room, I can't think of the word off the top of my head, um, but whether or not, yeah, you're, you've got the representation of LGBT people, you've got um, people with uh, who are not neurotypical, you know? I'm not saying a writer's room has to check every single box. I'm not saying every single... Um, like every single group of people has to check every single box. I think that's unrealistic, but doing your best to try to represent those different groups can help improve everything a lot better, you know? Don't bring them in for that sole purpose necessarily, but try to get someone who's qualified to enter that area. So in this instance, right, it doesn't need to represent everything necessarily, but having one person who's representing their area who is also a non-bender, but they still should be a, a proficient leader or whatever, like soccer, for example, but obviously he's dead, but I'm saying um, that's an example of someone who would be one, a good leader and two, a non-bender. Having someone like that on the council is able to at least put a little bit of a roadblock from stuff like this happening. And non-benders still represent a, a, a portion of the population, like a non- uh, non-ignorable sig significant portion not a majority by any means but a significant portion I mean we saw the equalist rallies and stuff there were a lot of non-benders who were behind this cause so if those people like need to be represented I think you're gonna have to have a, a non-bender there somewhere um but you know that's just the way I feel about it I I'm just wondering if that's gonna get addressed in the future or if that's kind of now swept under the rug because Amon was the bad guy, you know? Like, he was exposed as a liar and a terrorist and all of that stuff. And so maybe his idea was full flat. Maybe people don't care about them anymore because the one person advocating for them was uh, the bad guy and everyone sees him as the bad guy. History is written by the victors and all that. Um, uh, well, the... Iro scene where he's going from plane to plane. That's that's a sick scene. There's not much else to say about it other than it was really cool. Um, and we saw Boomy as well, which is which is cool. I'm excited to see. I imagine he's going to be in future seasons because he looked too interesting to not be. So I wonder what he's going to be like. Um, is there anything else? Uh, what does that say? Oh, you know what that says? That says Marco and Cora. <laughs> Um, I think I, I think I would have been okay with Marco and Korra right now if Marco and, and Asami had fully sorted out their stuff, properly talked it out, and, uh, and I didn't feel terrible about it, you know? Like, it, it's hard for me to feel the romance of a scene when I am so empathetic towards the person who is being screwed over in that circumstance. Obviously, not everything works out. I'm not saying Marco and Asami have to be together. All I'm saying is Marco and Asami should be talking to one another, or rather Marco should be talking to Asami and saying, look, you're a, you're an amazing woman. I, uh, I'm sorry for screwing you over all this time. You're right. I do have feelings for Korra and I don't think it's fair for you to continue to be hurt by this. You know, and then like, then Asami obviously is going to be devastated and she's going to grieve, but like, that's, that's the best way for her to be able to move on rather than her boyfriend following after Korra and saying, I love you and making out with her in the middle of the snow, you know, now it's possible that in the previous episode, when he says, I really care about you, and she says, I really care about you too, or whatever, it's possible the implication there was, like, you're right, and I'm breaking up with you. That, it's, it's, 
Like, it, that might be what they were implying with that, and maybe both of the characters understood that, in which case, I guess it's fine, but <laughs> as a person who thinks communication is important, uh, I think communication is important in a scene like that. I think they should have a big talk. But also, as I said, there was a fuck ton in this episode. It was a 24 minute episode and they fit in so much stuff. They probably couldn't fit in a proper conversation between Asami and Marco. But maybe it'll be something that's addressed in the next season. Maybe Asami will walk out and be like, um, Marco, what the fuck is going on? So I don't know. But anyway... That's Legend of Korra Season 1. We're done, baby. We're moving on to Season 2 next time. I'm excited. Can you please make sure to support this video if you can? I want to read your comments about the season and about your thoughts on all this sort of stuff. Obviously, don't spoil anything for me or hint at anything. I'm enjoying this show so much and I don't want to get spoiled for it. Um, but uh, if you have any things to say about what I've said and stuff like that, um, make sure to comment it down below. Don't be mean to me, please. I understand that sometimes I will have readings of situations which are vastly different from other people's readings of situations, or that I'll go off on these tangents that are, uh, I don't know, virtue signaling e, uh, <laughs> where I'll spend 20 minutes talking about having a balanced writer's room with, uh, with women and other races and LGBT people represented and stuff. And for some people, they don't vibe with that sort of, sort of discussion. Don't be mean to me about it. <laughs> that's that's what I ask of you, um, and uh, and but I still want to read your comments, so make sure to leave them down below. Subscribe to the channel, and my Patreon account has full length early access and exclusive videos. There's so many episodes on there now. I'm gonna be super far ahead, so you can go check it out. I think I'll probably be like three or four episodes ahead at least by the time you're watching this on YouTube. Maybe more. Who knows? So go check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.